Myra. And I'm Kenneth. And, and we, we are Wonderlust with both, both of us. us. Today we wanted to talk to you about how we became full-time RVers, where we are in our transition, and what we plan for our future as full-time RVers. So my retirement plans were to get an RV and travel the United States non-stop and see everything that I've ever wanted to see. But I understand that not everybody wants this. Matter of fact, Myra didn't even like the idea at first. No, exactly. I imagine myself 70 in a drivable RV going around the country. That's all I could understand or see. And so for that reason, it wasn't something I was thinking about or even cared anything about. But after you started showing me some videos and some pictures and things like that on uh, people doing this now and more like our own age or even yeah. sometimes younger, I was a little bit more intrigued and did a lot more research and looking into it. So we kind of uh, grew that plan from there. We kind of decided at that point we really wanted to do this. And uh, we came up with the idea that we'd have to start somewhere. So... As soon as I got Myra on board, we decided to set out some goals and uh, we decided we wanted to be full-time RV living within three years. First thing we needed to do was decide what kind of RV would suit our needs. Yeah, so we kind of looked around at different types of RVs. I mean, of course, there's the travel trailer, there is a fifth wheel, and there's drivable. Uh, we really liked the layouts and the space that you'd get in a fifth wheel more than anything. So we kind of attached ourselves to a fifth wheel when we started to do the research and look into them. That led us to know that we needed a better, more heavy-duty truck. Yeah, we started out, uh, we had a 2006 Nissan Frontier, and it really didn't have the power that we would need to pull a serious RV. Um, it was a V6, gas, and it really could only pull about 6,000 pounds. Yeah, so we kind of started looking around. I mean, we went to dealers, we went and saw private sellers selling their used trucks, and we knew that we kind of needed something a lot more heavy duty. And we weren't really finding anything. We just happened to stop off at a dealership. Uh, it happened to be a Nissan dealership just to take a look around. And lo and behold, they actually have a new truck that just recently came out. And I looked over and it was a Titan XD with a diesel engine. Yeah, it's a Cummins diesel engine. It has 350 horsepower and 555 foot-pounds of torque, which basically translates to it can pull anything we would ever need. Yeah, we sought out this particular truck after we realized that uh, this was something that we could get, and we actually found one and purchased it. All right, so now that we got a truck, now it's time to seriously sit down and take a look at what RV we want to purchase. So we did go around to a lot of RV shows. Uh, we went to uh, RV dealers. We checked out uh, things up close and personal, which was awesome. We really got to see that RVs can actually be like little tiny homes. They're really nice. They have a lot of things that you already would expect to have at home. And so that gave us what we really wanted in an RV. We created our own checklist of what we wanted. I know I really honestly wanted a king size bed. I wanted a full size shower. The little corner ones were just a little too small for me. And I really wanted to have the living room and the the uh, kitchen area kind of separated so that it felt more like a real home. And I wanted a little bit more of the manly things. I wanted it to be four seasons rated. Uh, I wanted the auto leveling feature, which is a must, by the way. Uh, that's where you pull up, disconnect, press a button, and it levels itself out. It's, it's press and play. It's easy to go. And I also, I wanted a recliner. Yeah, it was pretty nice to get the recliner aspect out of it, but even better, we found the exact layout that we wanted, and it gave us the opportunity to get it in either a travel trailer or a fifth wheel, and because we needed a little bit more storage, and that was the main difference, we obviously chose the fifth wheel. Yeah, and that's why we recommend highly to go to an RV show. You get to see everything that's out there, all the new current gadgets and everything like that, and you get to see things... Uh, across the budget spectrum. You can see things for someone that only wants a teardrop to someone who wants a million dollar drivable RV. You can see everything at an RV show. Yeah, so we decided on a open range Roamer 347 rear entertainment suite. So we ended up bringing this one home and now we have our truck, now we had our RV, and we were just ready to start taking some trips to get 
acclimated and acquainted to our new equipment. And before we started taking trips, we had to take care of a few things on our end. We were running a dog boarding facility from our house, which turned out to be fairly successful. We started having to look at our schedule and seriously block out some time to where we could actually start getting out there and hitting the road. Not only that, but with our successful business, we knew we couldn't take it with us when we got ready to actually get out there and travel full time. So we started having to let our guests know that we were going to be transitioning over and officially closing our doors for good. Luckily, our guests were all excited for us. They all seemed extremely happy. Of course, sad to see us go, but more than anything, happy that we were able to do what we wanted to do. That leads us to one more thing. We don't have any kids, but we do have five dogs, and we plan on taking every one of them with us. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I didn't anticipate to leave my dogs at home, but most people probably aren't accustomed to having five dogs, let alone traveling in an RV full-time with five dogs. With that being said, we knew that this was going to have to take some careful planning to make sure that everything happens very smoothly. We started out with a very short trip at Indian Springs State Park. This is a local area for us and uh, we stayed there for a few days with some friends of ours just to, you know, kind of set up the RV and tear it back down and really get the ins and outs of the RV and how it all works while still being pretty close to home. Yeah, our other trips that we took were about four or five hour drives, so we needed we needed to make sure that we got a chance to drive it for a distance that would give us a little bit more of an understanding of what we would expect on a full-time trip. So we did take a trip to Carabelle, Florida. Yeah. Uh, we went to Daytona Beach, Florida, and we also saw a friend of ours in, in Charleston, Charleston, South, South Carolina. Carolina. So it was a really fun few trips, but we definitely needed to start moving towards the actual full-time aspect. And so this led us to put our house on the market. We were so lucky because within just one day of our house being on the market, we got a full asking price. So the buyer decided to buy all of the furniture in the home and made the move extremely easy. We were able to just go ahead and move directly into the RV and get it uh, on a permanent property for the next year. Now that's gonna lead us into what we're doing with our RV and where we're staying. We did a little bit of uh, math. Um, we decided that it probably would make a little bit more sense to prep an area on my parents' property. And we decided to move that, uh, move it to that property for a year. We wanted to be able to, of course, get acclimated, see what it was like living in the RV full time. But before we actually got it moved over, Kenneth here had to do a whole lot of prep. Well, I had to build Myra an office that she could continue to work from home in. Yeah, I actually worked from home. I wanted to continue to do that for at least a year, and that way I could appropriately leave the company. Even though I couldn't take the job with me, I had to, uh, you know, at least stick around with the next year so I could save and do a lot more prepping and everything like that. So after we got the office all prepped out, ready to start working in, um, we also had to get a septic system installed, water installed, and, and then run 50 amp electrical. Um, ultimately, we've been here for about 11 months, and uh, so far, so good. I mean, I, I have to say that there's not a whole lot of changes from what I expected to live in a you know 2,100 square foot home to less than probably 400 square foot in the RV. Yeah, and one of the things that we really made sure that we did was we took a, a serious look at what we use in our own lives and what we really need and want, and basically anything else that we didn't need we either had to donate it or sell it or yard sales goodwill we just got rid of it we called it the purge yeah with the purge uh we had to get rid of everything that of course we could not fit in our rv so if we didn't need it we got rid of it and uh we ultimately narrowed down to a very small um adjusted space and so that's where we're at right now now, the fact that we've been here for about 11 months, we're so close, we're about weeks away from moving on to our first stop, and that's gonna bring us to the next portion of the full-time living and what we expect for the future. Um, so we've actually done a lot of research and we've decided we wanted to do something called hosting or work camping, which actually allows us to get a place uh, pretty much comped for a little bit of uh, volunteer work. Yeah, you basically volunteer, let's say 10 or 20 hours and uh, at a campsite and this campsite will give you a spot to park with full hookups. Full hookups basically includes sewer, uh, water, electrical, cable, and sometimes internet. Yeah, at this 
uh, rate, we really needed to find somewhere to go, somewhere that we could actually set up and be uh, set up as uh, work campers, and uh, that way we could, you know, live on a budget, of course. Uh, we did locate a place in the Okefenokee Swamp, which is in South Georgia, and it's actually a mere few minutes away from so many other things. We're about 45 minutes away from Jacksonville, Florida. And Savannah. Savannah, Georgia, Tybee Island, and a lot of other places, and we anticipate traveling around and, and seeing all of these areas while we're there. We're going to be there for about four months and we're going to be sit up, set up to do about 20 hours between the two of us work camping positions and, and hosting for this campsite. So we definitely want to give you guys more about it once we get there and once we uh, have everything set up and ready to start working. We, would, we definitely want to share this with you. So our future videos to come certainly will include some of the information um, about this gig and what it takes to do it. And we also plan on showing you tips and tricks that we have learned and how we also have customized our RV to our own style. Right, so we certainly want to show you our RV. We want to show you things that we had to buy and what kind of, uh, you know, little things that we changed that we appreciated more. Um, but that'll come in the future videos. We do anticipate to do at least one video a week and share with you guys, you know, what happens on our journey. And if you like what you see, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And we definitely want to just conclude here that we're not experts. We're not portraying ourselves no. as experts by no means. We've already had some crazy stuff happen, which we will gladly share. Um, but uh, we're just here to just have a good time and for entertainment purposes, let you guys see what we're doing. It's been a lot of fun and we thank you so much for watching and check us out next time.